So the topic we are discussing today is a most fundamental one. And to me, it is so important because I'm not aware of any of the Achroinim which brought up this topic. So we will start from Gemoras up to Mamish Achroinim, Achroinim. And I'm not aware of any Machaber that put this on the table as a general Chakira and brought together many sources. So, you know, it's, it, it's part of, uh, of my teaching, you know, to, to see Torah in a very broad, broad vision. Like the eagle's eye soaring from up there and seeing such a panoramic view. And, you know, it's, it's, part, of, it's, it's part of the way we should learn Torah. So today we will touch about 15 sources. Tes Vav Mekaitis, starting off with Gemoras, up to the Achroinim and trying to define Dumya de Mishkan. So to what extent, to what level, to what degree do Malachas need to be Dumya de Mishkan? It just occurs to me right now at the spur of this moment, not 15, 16. One more. So let's embark on this unbelievable journey. It starts off with the Gemara. How do we know Lamed Tes Malochas? Shabbos Mem Tes Omed Beis. There are two different opinions in the Gemara. Lechad man da Omer keneged Malocha Malach Toishu Betayro. In the Torah, we find the concept Malocha thirty-nine times, and that is how Chazal knew there are Lamed Tes Malochas. Yes, man da Omer. Keneged Malachas Amishkan. It is not the number 39, Lamites, that Chazal knew there's got to be Lamites, and they went looking for Lamites. They just analyzed and observed Akomas Amishkan. Any Malacha that was essential, Akomas Amishkan, is a Malacha Shabbos. And why is that? Iskishu Malachas Amishkan, a Malacha Shabbos. It's a Hekish. Malachas and Mishkan and Shabbos are one next to the other in Titus Moshe, and that is why all the Malachas that were essential needed in a Kamas and Mishkan are Shabbos. So, maybe coincidental, they found Lamites. So, we learn Lamites Malachas from the Mishkan. Is that just to determine what the Malachas are? Or does this also have impact on the dinim, on the halachas, on the gedorim of Hilchas Shabbos? It is only to define which of the malachas that we learn from the Mishkan, or does it need to be dumya the Mishkan? So I quoted the Gemara Shabbos Mem Tesum and Beis, but there's another Gemara I'm right in the beginning of Bovakama. Oves Nezikin, Arba Oves Nezikin. And the Gemara deals in the very first Shtikl Gemara in Baba Kama. And the Gemara brings Ovis Nazikin, Ovis Shabbos, Ovis and Toldois, Ovis Machlal de Ike Toldois. And the Gemara says, Hach da have be Mishkon Chashiva, Kore lei av. And there are two Pshotim in the Rishonim. How do we understand these two words, Mishkon Chashiva? According to one shot, Toysvis and the other is Shainim. Which means those malochas that were in the Mishkan are counted and defined as Avois. The other shot in Toysvis is there were many more than Lamites Malachas that were involved in Akavis Mishkan. We define as Oves Malachas only those that were Choshev Malachas in Akavis Mishkan. It is not enough that it was in the Mishkan. It need to be a Malach of importance, a Malach Chashive Ba'Akavis Mishkan. So according to this Pshat and Baba Kamed of Be'amadala, it is not only analyzing and defining which malochas were needed by Kamas Mishkan, but which malochas were choshev and essential. 
it would be impossible to be to erect the Mishkan without those malachas. Number two brings us back. I think it was the first shit I said in Shabbos. So first. We gave many shiurim on tefillah, on brachas. I do not recall whether I gave a shiur in this context in the Archikal and Malachis Machsheves. I think I did, but this is a very famous shiur that I gave in various places. I gave this shiur many years ago for two thousands of Avrechim in Lakewood. Malachis Machsheves is the most fundamental rule when we deal with Malachis Shabbos. Ad Kedekach, many people think that Malachas Machsheves is written in the Torah in the context of Shabbos, which it is not. Malachas Machsheves is found in the Torah only in the context of Mishkan. It is from Mishkan that we learn that Malachas Shabbos need to be Malachas Machsheves. And in the shir I gave a Malachas Machsheves, I stressed about 25 different halachas that we learn from Malachas Machsheves. So the most fundamental rule, the most Yesodes Deka Hagdora in Malachas Shabbos is actually Hagdora that we find in the Mishkan, not in Shabbos. And that is Malachas Machsheves. So first of all, how do we know which the Malachas are? Mishkan. What is the aside of Malachas Shabbos? Mishkan, Malachas Machsheves. And as we move forward with the 16 different sources, we will become more and more exclusive and we will go from Klolim to Protim. So we started off with the biggest cloud. What are the Malachas? Number two. The Agdor of Malachas Machsheves. Number three, Malachas She'ein Tzlicha Legufo. We don't have time today to go into details defining Dovi Shemeschav, Malachas She'ein Tzlicha Legufo. We dealt with some of these sugyas in the past. Malachas She'ein Tzlicha Legufo is a Malacha that is performed and our intention is not le'ikar amalacha, but rather a side effect, not the mahus of the malacha. The most clear example is choifer gumo ve'enoi tzorech elo le'afura. So when you dig a pit, the etzim amalacha is the pit. But if a person digs a hole or a pit because he needs the earth, he needs the dust, he has no intention of using the pit, but rather taking the earth out. That is a malacha shein sicha lagufo. Because it is a malacha that we perform not because we have intent and need in gufa malacha, but rather in a side result a secondary result. But there's a machlaik as Rashi and says, how do we know what is the Mohusa Malacha? So who says that Malacha's Choyfer is about the pit and not about the sand? Maybe it's about the sand and not the pit. Because whenever you dig a hole, you are taking earth out of that hole. The earth doesn't disappear doesn't evaporate. And there's no way to dig a pit without taking earth out. So how do we know what's the Ikra Malacha? Toysis Shabbos Tzadik Dalad Amidalaf Mishkan. The reason the Malachas were performed by Akobas Mishkan that defines what is the Ikra and Mahus Hamalach. So when they dug a pit in the Mishkan, it was not to use the earth but rather to build the Mishkan. You say this, so Oihalim were cemented and put into the earth to erect the Mishkan. The Mishkan should stand steady. 
So that is how we know what is the Mahusa Malocha. It is not just our feeling, but Toysis explains the essence of the Malochas as they were performed in the Mishkan, that determines what is Hagdoras Hamalach. So once again, we find the Mishkan. Mishkan is the definition. Not only to the general rule of Malachas of Malachas Mosheves. Malachas Mosheves includes many Alochas. Malachas Shein Sichol Guf is only one of them. But how do we know Gufo? Malachas Shein Sichol Gufo. What is Gufo? How do we determine what is Gufo Shara Malacha? Once again, Mishkan. Now we move over to six different sources in which Mishkan defines not a general halacha, which has a shaykhis with all the lametes, but specific malachas. Malacha number three, malacha number five, malacha number 10, malacha number 20. The details of various specific malachas are also determined by the way they were performed in the Mishkan. And that is an additional stage. So what I'm trying to impress upon you is today's sheet is very systematic. It moves from one stage to the other. We started with the most fundamental yisoid. What are the malachas? How do we know which malachas? Mishkan. More specific, the gather of Malachas Shabbos, Malachas Machshavis, Mishkan. More specific, not Malachas Machshavis, which affects the entire spectrum of Gidre Malachas, but one of the Gidre Malachas and Sichel Gufa. How do we know what's Gufa? Mishkan. And now we proceed to deal with specific Malachas and prove. How we determine the halachas of many given malachas, the details, also depend on Mishkan. In the Mishnah Shabbos, Ayin Gemal Amad Aleph, Oves Malachas Arboam Choser Achas, HaKorea Al Menas Litfoyo. Why does the Mishnah say HaKorea Al Menas Litfoyo? The malachas Korea. And in this list, we don't go into details. We don't go into halachas. Each of the lamites has many, many halachas. So why dafka by korea? The Mishnah says ha korea al menas litfoyo. So Rashi explains korea shelo al menas litfoyo. Is not a tour of Mekalkel. It's not a malocha at all. So a manas litfor is not only a detail. In Mishkan, there were Korea al manas litfor. Yeriyesh nofal bodarna. One of the areas. So a worm, a parasite made a hole. What do we do? We cut open the area. We take out the entire section. And then we are machavadam. We, what's toifer? What's toifer in English? I always ask you to help me out with terminology. Sewing, sewing. Sewing. So we take out the entire line and we sew them together. So Korea and the Mishkan is Korea and lit for And therefore, if it's Shalom and lit for some Rishon maintain, it's a Makalka. But Rashi maintains, no. This is what we find in the Mishkan, Korea and lit for And therefore, any other Korea, which is not a Manas lit for is not Melech's Korea. So what we find here is Mishkan also determines the details of a given malacha. Because the first three sources are general halachas, which affect all the malachas, general adoras. 
So the Quran and Aslit will you find it is only this specific form of Quraya that is defined as a Marokha Badoz. That was the only Quraya in Mishkan. There's a boy in the Gemara regarding Hoitso and Rishus Rishus. Once again, a specific Malacha. Moitzi Rishus Rishus. Anybody that learned Perekama de Shabbos knows that a Moitzi Rishus Rishus needs to do Akira and Hanacha. Akira from one Rishus, Hanacha in the other. Either way, or the other way around, or But you need to do an akira, taking it out, lifting it out of one rishos, and putting it down in another. And the gemara is misupak. Ego is al gabe kli, al gabe mayim. So ego is al gabe mayim potu. Because that's not Anocha. When you put something down, Anocha B'Shabbos, it needs to be Anocha on a solid surface where it stays on one place. But Anocha Al-Gabi Mayim is not a Anocha. Mayim moves, it's not solid. But then the Gemara has an Eboya, Ego is Bekli, Kli Al-Gabi Mayim. So there's a dish, there's, there's a box, and the box is floating in the pond, in the river, and you put something into the box. So you did put it on a solid surface. But the box is bobbling in the water. Would that be defined as anocha? So Toysus asks a fundamental question. We say that a sfina, a boat, is not a chotzer malechas. Because the boat is solid. It moves by the water. That's not a chotzam alechas. So Toysus asks, why would there be a difference between these two concepts? Legabi king and chotzer is not a chotzam alechas. Legabi Shabbos, he might be potter. Toysus answers, because Shabbos needs to be dumia de mishkan. And Anoch and mishkan was either in Rishus Arama or Rishus Ayochid. Either in the midbar outside or in the mishkan which had mechitzes, that's a Rishos Yochad. There was no Anoch al Mayim, not even Kli al Mayim. So once again, Toysa says, this halacha is based on Mishkan. It is a specific din in one of the Lametes, not a general concept, which has a shaykhis with all the malachas. No, a specific halacha in Egez al Gabi Kli, al Gabi Mayim. And regarding Malachas Eitzor, we have a few examples of Dumya de Mishkan. From Hayomet Beis, we move on to Tzadik Dala Domet Alaf. Chai no Isay This is probably a locha most of you are familiar with. You carry a child, Mershus Lershus, it's only an Isidara Bonum, or an animal. Chai no Isay So the Gemara says it is easier to carry a living creature than dead weight. So therefore, when you carry any balachayim, whether it's a human, child, or an adult, or an animal, it's not defined as a tzvodi uraisa. And Taisus wonders, what is the svara? What's the logic of this halacha? Is it shnayim she'asu? Because the living creature, as if, helps us carry it? So, what would be the potu, the ptur of Chai no Isesatzmoy? Taisus explains the same as we just mentioned before. There was no Haitzo of Bale Chaim in the Mishkan. Haitzo in the Mishkan is Kroshim. The Kroshim they took from the Agolais outside. From the Midbar on the Agolois. That is Haitzoa Vahnosa. There was no Haitzoa Vahnosa Balachaim, and that is the Ptur. From the Mishkan, 
we also learn how to define rishuyos. So I just explained two halachas, specific halachas and halachas etzoa, that Taisis explains, do me the mishkan. Hey, omit beis, tzarek dalad amadalach. But how do we define and determine the dinam of Rishus Arabim are also learned from Mishkan. And that is why Rishus Arabim Mikuro is not defined as a Rishus Arabim. Rishus Arabim must be open to the sky. If it has a roof, has no mechitzes, so it's not a Rishus HaYochid. There could be no Rishus HaYochid without Mechitzes. But if it has a roof, it has a cover, it is neither a Rishus HaRabim. And why not? Why not? So in the modern world, we have many Rishus HaRabims which are covered. Many promenades, many big avenues, Train stations, okay, so train stations usually have mechitzes, so there are Rishus HaYochid. But in the modern world, there could be many Rishus HaRabbins which are covered, but it's not Dumi the Mishkan. Therefore, it cannot be a Rishus HaRabbin. You are all familiar with Shittas Rashi. There are more Paskins in accordance to Rashi, the Bishyos of Nat. The Rishus Arabim must have Shishim Ribo. And that is Rashi Davove Mesechet Shabbos. How do we know Shishim Ribo? So all, most of our Eruvin are based on the Ramah. There are a few different places in the Shabbos Paskins. We have no Rishus Arabim the Uraisim is Manazim because there are not shishim ribo. I wrote many tshuvas about this. And in Minchas Osha Masechet Shabbos, I think it is Simen Chaf. This is a very lengthy simen about the Gdorim of Rishus Arabim, shishim ribo, the Ramos and Shin, Mem, Hei, Siv, Zayin. Ain Rishus Arabim, the Uray Sebizman, is only midrabon. It's all based on Rashi. Rashi writes, Shishim Reboi is necessary to define a Rishus Arabim. And why was that? Because that's where it was in Mishkan. There was Shishim Rebo in Mishkan. So two specific halachas in defining a Rishus Arabim that we learn from the Mishkan. We move on from one detail to the other. Malachas Geizes. So we mentioned before, Malacha Shein Sicha Lagufa. Sometimes you perform a Malacha to achieve a secondary goal, secondary result, not for the essence of the Malacha, but from some side result or secondary result. And the example I gave is Choifer Guma, the Einoit Sorach El Lafora. You don't need the pit. You need the sand or the soil or the earth that you take out. And that's Malach Shen Sichel Agufa. How about Malachas Geizes? Geizes is cutting wool off sheep. That is the Geizes that was in Mishkan. So how about a person that's Geizes? Not because he wants to use the wool, but he wants to clean the surface. The most common example is cutting nails. Is that a malacha di orais, when you cut your nails? Or you take a scissors and you cut your hair. We throw away the hair, we throw away the nails. So how do we define malachas geizes? Is geizes cleaning the hide from the hair? Or is geizes primarily like wool? in which the objective, the goal is to have the wool. Tshuva Sariva Shin Tzadik Dalet says that Geizes is either of the two because both 
were needed in the Mishkan. And this is a big Kiddush. Because usually, Malachi Shetzich HaLaguf is defined one objective, and all the other are secondary goals, which are defined in Shetzich HaLaguf for. Let's say, Gavaldi Gichinish of the Rivash. The Rivash says, but Oires Ayolim, they removed the hair because they only wanted the hide. So that is geysers. They also needed wool. So that is geysers as well. So geysers the Urais is either of the two, which is an uncommon halacha. Usually we always define what is the essence of a malacha. And that is one definition. And all the others would be secondary goals, would be only be an issue that are born in Malocha Shein Sikha Lagufa. Geysers is an exception. And that's true as Arivashi in Sadiq Dalad. And why is that? Mishka. Tzayda, an amazing Kiddush of the Maharshal, quoted by the Mughan of Rome, Tav Tzadik Zayin Sif Kotn Vav. The Mughan of Rome is in Hilchas Yantav and not in Hilchas Shabbos. Mughan of Rome quotes Mashal, catching fish is not say the Diuraisa. Because in the Mishkan there was no need to catch fish. There are no Karbonis. You can't bring fish as a Korban on the Mizbech. And we could assume that in the desert there weren't many fish. And therefore, catching fish is not seder diurais. The Mughan of Rome disagrees. And this is the first source which I want to bring and discuss. Tomia the Mishkan must have a limit. We must try to be mitzans and Dumia the Mishkan. So, what did they catch in the Mishkan? Tioshi. Would we say there is no tzayd only by Tyoshim? We don't even know what Tyoshim are. If Bakhlal, there are Tyoshim. And other tzayd maybe was the Chalazan. But the Chalazan is a sea creature. So maybe they brought along the Chalazan. But the Gemara does say, Tzayyode Chalazan. So the chalazan is some type of a snail. So would there be say the only by snails and only by the taish? Definitely not. So mehecha taste it to say fish is not say the diuraisa. So this is the first source in which, on one hand, the marshal says do me the mishkan. And the Mughal of Rome says, no, no, no. There's a limit to Dumiya the Mishkan. No Malocha needs to be exactly for the same reason that they needed it in the Mishkan. We're moving forward. And we're still into specific details of this Malocha or that Malocha, specific Malochas. We're back to Korea, the Bialocha. Shin Mem Sifiud Gimel as a big Kiddush in Korea. And he says, when you trim off a baguette and you cut off pieces and you throw them away, that's not Korea de Uraisa. Korea de Uraisa is only when you intend to use both sides, not one of the two. Because I explained about 15 minutes ago, which Korea was in the Mishkan on an aslit for it. If an insect made a hole in the areas, you cut the entire length, you pull out that thread, and then you sew both parts together. So Korea is the Uraisa only when you intend to use both sides. So trimming a cloth or a baguette or a piece of fabric just to make it smaller or to make it nicer, and you throw away what you cut off, that is not a Korea de Uraisa because it's not Dumi de Mishkan. Moicheik, Me'il Tzedaka, one of the Achroinim is in Machofei, has a disagreement, the Machlekes with the Bach. 
is moichik only when you erase letters, ink, or shava. So shava dropped onto a safer title and you peel it off. Would that be moichik? Bach says yes. Me'il Tzedakah says it's not do the Mishkan. So we're up to 12. 13 brings us back to a recent shear. Mevashel Bechama. So Rashi says, Mevashel Bechama is not Bishul because it's not Derech Bishul. So you remember, I quoted some sources, present day Gedolim, that say, not do me the Mishkan. Igris Moshe, and that is number 16, which I just recalled. Why isn't it on my basic list? Because my basic list only deals with Divrei Gedoyle HaRashoinim V'Achroinim from the Gemara up to the Marsham. I didn't take into account present day Gedoyle, but according to the Moshe, Bishul Bacham is not Bishul, Dimir the Mishkan. As you remember, Aniya Koton Vadal, Cotton Shadan Lefnera Boys of Bekarka disagreed with Ramosha because I, I, I showed you that Bishul Bacham is also put of a call in Pesach and Bosa Bacholov. And Pesach and Bosa Bacholov definitely have nothing to do with Mishkan. So we move forward to number 14, 15, 16. And this is Mamesh Hidushim Gedailam of the Achlainim. And I think Rabbi Gadisman already mentioned these sources, but I will go over them. A big machloikis between the Noide Behud and the Chsam Soif, the two giants of Tkufis Achroinim, regarding Parasol. So Parasol is what we define an umbrella. And it is very uncommon in Hilcha Shabbos that according to one opinion, we're dealing with a Chi of Chatas, and the other says, Muta lechat chila. The noy de biyudu madurit in yon orachayim simalam, it says, opening an umbrella would be a chi of chatas. And that's a oil gomer, oil kva. Shuvis chasam soy for orachayim sim and ayin beis says, I don't even know if it would be an isa de rabbon. So the chasam soy for falls short of being mata lechat chila. But he does say, Italia, I don't even think it would be an Issa de Rabbono. But Lamai say he's Chayshish, and he's not Mati, but he says, definitely not a Diuraisa, for three different reasons. I will only mention Ois Beis, the second reasoning of the Chsam Seifa. So the Chsam Seifa says, it might be an Oihel, but it's not the Mir the Mishkan. We do have an oil kva and an oil are. An oil kva is a permanent oil, and an oil are is a temporary one. I won't go into details. So, how temporary does an oil need to be to be defined as an oil are, which is only an Enisadarabonum? But the Chsam Soifa argues even a temporary oil is fixed in one place. We don't find in the Mishkan an oil that a person carries around, some kind of a personal oil. And wherever the person goes, the oil goes along. That is totally not Dumya the Mishkan. So the Chsam Soifa lived one generation after the Noida Behuda. I tried to guess what the, would the Noida Behuda respond to the Samsoyev's argument. It's not the Behuda Mishkan. The Noida Behuda probably would say, does it, does it need to be Dumya the Mishkan? And it's only where we find in Chazal, in the Rishonim Dumya the Mishkan, but we must limit this Dumya the Mishkan. How Dumya does it have to be? So just a few moments ago, I, I asked, would we say that Malacha Saitso is only Kroshim? Only wood? 
and not anything else. So there are three prokim in Mesechet Shabbos, which deals with Malachas Eitzua of all kinds of foodstuffs and water and shemen and eggs and paper and klaf. In the Mishkan, Eitzua was crushing. In the Mishkan Seder was the Chalazan and the Taish. So there's a limit, do me the Mishkan, to what extent, to what degree? I think the Mita Mishkan is only in the essence of the Maloch and the Mahus. So this is exactly the Machloikis and the Buddha, some cipher regarding an umbrella. With an umbrella that is portable, not only temporary, but portable, and it is carried Mamokam Lamokoim, would that still be defined as an oil? According to some cipher, no. According to the Buddha, yes. And the Naidi Buddha probably would. Respond to the some cipher. No, this is beyond what Dumya the Mishkan means. Dumya the Mishkan doesn't mean exactly Dumya the Mishkan. It's still an oil. It's still an oil. And the some cipher would say no. An oil which is personal and it moves from place to place together with a man is not an oil. But I wonder on the some cipher. Hannah Siani, it's a Gamorman for regarding a broad hat. And the Gamorman says a broad hat is also. And there are a few Purushim in the Rishonim. Some Rishonim say oil. Well, a hat is no different than an umbrella. And that some Sofer doesn't bring that Gemara. And that proves that the Noi be, would be right. That is still Dumya the Mishkan. It doesn't need to be Dumya the Mishkan. Ad Kedai Kach. Rabbi Yudha Asad was a contemporary of the Chsim Sofer. I think slightly about 15 years younger than the Chsim Soifer. He was a Talmud of Ramon Chaybenet. And this is really, to my taste, beyond, beyond what is reasonable in Dumya de Mishkan. So he was asked about a new, a new mikveh that was built, and it had a pump. Rabbi Yudha Asad calls it a plump. So when you open the water, the water past a chute and it wasn't like a plastic or a metal pipe that's used today it was actually dug into the earth and the water passed in a ta'ala which was actually earth so every time you open that faucet and the water came surging through that uh, what's a ta'ala that uh, that passage underground a canal a canal yeah maybe that's the right word so when water flows through it's broadened would that be the same chashash as tikkun as ein noyatsin sakin beno avonim bekoisel so you can't put the sack in the knife in and out because you're fixing that, that little crevice between the bricks. So somebody sent me that maybe the canal would be a trench. So the question of Yudha Asad was dealing with, so it's new. So when water flows through, it's actually like solidifying that canal, that trench. Would that be a chashash of tikkun mona, of a malocha? Rabbi Yudha Asad said, all the Lamites and Malchus and Mishkan were visible to the naked eye. You saw what you're achieving. This canal or this trench is underground. We don't see it. So it's not Dumya the Mishkan. And it wouldn't be a Malach Abirais. I'm taking it back. So if you don't see it, it's not Dumya the Mishkan. You know, my argument is nothing we do today is Dumya the Mishkan, nothing. Nothing we do today in Lamatas Malachas is Dumya the Mishkan. Well, maybe I can't say nothing. Maybe Korea would be Dumya, but almost anything we do today is not really Dumya the Mishkan. So when you put on fire, in your stove by pushing a button. 
or lighting a match. They didn't have matches in the Mishkan. They banged rocks together. That is how they made fire. Like other Marishan made fire. The second day of Bria and Maitzoi Shabbos. So nothing we do is really Dumiya the Mishkan. So we need to limit this concept of Dumiya the Mishkan to the most fundamentals. I think the essence of the Malocha needs to be Dumiya the Mahus, but not the way. So I think this review the Asad is very unreasonable because you don't see it. It's not visible. It's underground. That's why it's not Dumiya the Mishkan. So when you use electricity, so the flow of electrons is never visible. You can't see it because they're microscopic. The naked eye doesn't see the flow of electrons. You see the result. So the positive and the negative objects are in the wall. You don't see them. So I think Rabbi Yudha Asad is less reasonable than the Chassam Saifa. The Machlokis Chassam Saifa and Rabbi Yudha is, how do we define an oil? Could an oil that moves from place to place still be defined as an oil? That's a legitimate Machlokis. I think the Rabbi Yudha is right. And we prove the Gemara and the Rishonim by a hat that the Rabbi Yudha is right. But I do understand the opinion of the Chassam Saifa. I think Rabbi Yudha Asad is too far. Because you don't see it, it's not Dimir the Mushkan, not reasonable. And this brings us to the Maharasham. So electricity is one of the most fundamental questions in Hilchas Shabbos. The first two Gedailim dealing with an electrical circuit using electricity, would that be a, a malocha and which malocha? So the base Yitzchak is not dealing with lighting. He is dealing with telegraphs, sending messages. So actually, I think using electricity for sending telegraphs, that was Alexander Graham Bell. And that was before Thomas Edison made a light bulb and used electricity to light up a room. So the first two gedolim dealing with closing an electrical circuit is the Beis Yitzchak. Tshuves Yoradeya, Chelik Beis, and Malam Adalad, Mim Hashemot Ois. And the Masham dealing with lighting. Tshuves Masham, Chelik Beis, Reish Mem Zayin. There are two Reish Mem Zayins in Masham. This is very common, not as for him today. But in swarm of those days, so Reish Mem Zayin is double. Reish Mem Zayin number two in Shuvis Marsham Chelik Beis. The Bess Yitzchak says, electricity is a malocha de Rabbonon, moilid. And that was the opinion of the Gedolim up to the Chazanish 50 years later. The Chazanish is the first that it says, it's a chashash di oraisa of Boina. The Menchus Osho, Mania Cotton, Chubis Menchus Osho, Chela Kala from Amadala from Amad Beis. I argue that it's Maka Bepatish. Hanogea le Inyanenu, the Masham writes, I doubt it could be a Malocha di Uraisa because it's not Dumia de Mishkan. In Mishkan, they used fire. They know nothing about electrons and atoms and about the flow of electrons from negative to positive, which releases energy. So up to Ben Franklin, people weren't aware about electricity that releases energy. So the Marsham says, I don't know what it is, but I don't think it could be a Malocha Diuraisa because it's not Dumi the Mishkan, which is an interesting argument which the Chazanish did not accept. If it's Boina, it's Boina. And as I said before, almost nothing is Dumi the Mishkan. 
But the Marsham obviously argues, but this is so remote. It is so remote. It is so fundamentally different than anything we had in the Mishka that cannot be defined as a Malchad Yulais. I don't have any clear Haggadahs exactly to what degree do Malachas need to be done in the Mishkan. And therefore, in my opinion, Ein Lahakel Lamaisa. By the concept of the Mishkan, only ma what we find in the Rishonim and in the Great Paiskin. We cannot go beyond that. Regarding oil, we find a machlekes between the Nidimiyu and the Chsam Saifa. Electricity. The Beis Yitzchak was a contemporary of the Masham. They were both in the same door. The Beis Yitzchak doesn't, doesn't bring this whole of Dumi, the Mishkan, the Masham does. The Chazan argues it's a Diorais. So we find that Gedolim throughout the ages had different feelings and different opinions about Dumiya, the Mishkan. So the beauty of today's Shir is just bringing together all these sources. So as I said at the outset of the Shia, from the Gemara and Shabbos Memtes, just determining which are the Lametes, up to the Masham regarding electricity, 15 sources dealing with the concept of Mir the Mishkan. Number 16 is the Igis Moshe explaining Bishul Bachamo, why is it not defined as Bishul the Uraisa, Domir the Mishkan. So the Moshe is not mechadish anu halacha, like the Chsam Soifa, like Mari Asa, like the Marsham. He's just coming to explain a halacha that we already find in the Gemara, that Bishul Bacham is not a Bishul Yuraisa, neither the Rabban. So I shared my opinion with you, but the Moshe feels Domir the Mishkan, and that is a discussion we had two weeks ago one of the shiurim in Malachas Navashim. So I hope that you find today's shir interesting, and I do want to ask all of you, Choshev Alamdim, I brought together 15 sources, probably there are many more. So if you come across any additional sources, please let me know. So next time I'll give the shir, maybe it will benefit others, and maybe on our list we'll have 20 sources and not 15. I do think I went through most of the sources, but if you find any others, share them with me. Because as much as I love to teach, I also love to learn. Thank you once again. Have a beautiful day. Enjoy your learning.